Hello and welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena and I am so excited to catch up with you today. This is a podcast where we chat about knitting and fiber and even some crochet today. So if you are up for that, I hope you will hang out with me for the next hour or so, probably shorter today. It's been a crazy week here. I had one kid that was sick and then the other kid had a lot of high pressure school stuff. So it was um, a bit of a crazy week. So apologies in advance if I'm a little discombobulated, but you know, this is where we catch up about things we love. So it's always fun, no matter what. Um, yeah, it is. I'm gonna pull up my notes because I don't trust myself to remember everything we need to talk about today. Um, as usual, so much knitting fun. Um, as you can see, this is my FO of the week. This is the Callius cardigan. I will, I finished and started and finished this without knowing how to pronounce this. I don't know if it's Callius or Callias, but it is done. And that is what's the most important. Um, I knit mine out of Julie Aslan in the Nurtured Base in the colorway Do. I am not going to stand up and show you because I am tired and I don't want to have to do a bunch of editing, but um, I'm really happy this is off the needles, guys. I I would be lying if I said this was a super duper pleasure to knit. I did not love this project as much as I had hoped to. I think one of the reasons is I had to drop down two needle sizes to get gauge and if I had been smart, I would have taken that as a sign that I needed to pick a different yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn, and um, if I had thought about it more, I would have dropped down to a DK weight. But as I've said in previous weeks, this yarn was in my stash in a sweater's quantity, and I was desperate to use it because it had had many iterations that failed, and so... I was just determined to use it and that's never a great thing I think I think we need to you know really if you're forcing a square peg into a round hole it can often end up not working out great now how do I feel about the FO um, I had hopes that the fabric would relax more with an aggressive wet blocking. And unfortunately, I don't feel like it did. It just, you know, some knits, when you wet block them, they just bloom and relax. And it's just so lovely to see. I just didn't feel like this yarn did that. Um, it's still blocked out beautifully and it is a beautiful knit. It's more of a rustic yarn. It's not super wash. But I just had hopes of it softening and relaxing more. Um, on the plus side, I it is not itchy at all. And for a non-super wash yarn, I think that is pretty awesome. Um, it is dyed in the wool. Yes, it is dyed in the wool, similar to Spin Cycle. And then it is spun. So it has a different tonal quality to it. Sorry, I'm kicking my stand. Um, it's a very beautiful colored way. It's like this very subtle, um, minty, it reminds me of peppermint ice cream. It has that pink and, uh, very, very light green tones in it. So I do like it. I have been wearing it a lot. The other thing I don't love, and this has nothing to do with the yarn, but if I put this on and walked in my normal fashion with my arms by my side, just like walked down the hall, it would fall off my shoulders. So at, even here, you can see it's kind of like a very wide, it sits very wide on the shoulders. Um, and I have very broad square shoulders, which is usually good for keeping things up. So if you have more sloped shoulders, I think this design would maybe drive you a little crazy or maybe you're the kind of person that that's not a big deal but for me 
I really like my cardigans to stay on my shoulders and I had high hopes for this one. I I have found a few Andrea Maori cardigans do that and it drives me crazy, but this construction, I don't know. I'd have to kind of analyze the construction a little bit more to figure out why, but it's just a very wide, wide collar. I like that aesthetically, like when I'm sitting here, I like that it's wide, but just practically in life, it kind of is annoying. So I can't say I loved this piece. This was my first Isabel Kramer garment. Um, I don't know. I was really, I didn't love the process and I had been really hopeful that I was going to really love the finished object. And I don't know. It's, it's like a, I don't, I'm trying to think of what grade I would give it out of 10. I don't know that I can off the top of my head commit to a number, but I don't know. It's okay. It's definitely a nice staple, but I'm glad it's over. I am trying to wear it to warm up to it because sometimes I think our expectations can get in the way of our enjoyment of a piece. And so it sometimes takes time for that to just kind of even out and you're able to enjoy it more later. So um, I'm trying to wear it and enjoy it. So I wore it to my daughter's event at school this morning and I definitely enjoy how not itchy it is. I am prone to feeling things to be itchy and this is just not itchy at all. So that is probably my number one um, praise for this yarn. I have this other cardigan. I've talked about it here before. It is the Home Cardigan by Kadri. And I knit it up in a couple years ago in Mano Stel Uruguay in this single ply, I think it's worsted weight. And you guys, it is the most bummer of a garment because it is so cozy. I love it. It's so soft and it's like being given a hug and it has buttons. So I just, I wear it almost every night. It's almost like my robe. I put it over my pajamas and it stays on and it keeps me warm and it's cozy. And the fact that it's just like the most atrocious garment because it's pilled so much. I mean, I, I'm embarrassed to show you at this point. I, I forgot, I should have brought it just so you could see it. But this yarn is so bad and yet so cozy. It's just the worst combination because you want to live in it, but it just looks like you're, I don't know, like you found it at the bottom of a dump. Like that's what it looks like. Um, not cute in other words, but I'm always trying to find a cardigan to replace that. And I had high hopes that this would be the one, but it is not. Um, what I like about that one is that because I can button it up, it's not fussy. I'm not like constantly going like this. Um, so that's something I've learned that I need to make another cardigan. Maybe I'll just make that one again in a different yarn. And I might have to make it in a superwash yarn, even though I really want to like non-superwash yarns better. Sometimes there are qualities of superwash yarns that I'm embarrassed to say I like better, even though they are chemically treated and it doesn't feel as close to the sheep. It's just, they're so much softer by virtue of the fact that they've, you know, this, the fiber has been stripped down to be softer. Um, or maybe if I could find like an alpaca blend yarn and make a worsted weight cardigan out of that, maybe that would, you know, kind of be both soft and be a little bit more natural feeling. I don't know. I just, I keep trying to make cardigans that will replace that one, but I find myself being very lazy to do a button band. And this I was drawn to because it has a built in collar without buttons. So I might just have to suck it up and remake the home cardigan because I love that piece. It's such a beautiful basic. Um, I think I'm gonna have to do that, but that probably won't be till next season because it's spring you guys and I am in the mood for lighter knits now. So. Moving on from this guy, you know, 
I do like the way it turned out. The style details are very beautiful. I've shown you this so many times, but it has this really cool slip stitch ribbing. The entire back panel is this. And then I do like, you know, I think this is the way this turned out. It looks really pretty. The details are really nice. Very classic. Okay, so next up I have Helen Stewart's 12 Birds MCAL that's going on right now. Um, I know many of you are joining in, whether it's the 24 Birds or the 12. Um, it is so much fun. I'm going to show you my version, so if you don't want to see because you don't want any spoilers, um, you can fast forward. But I am in the middle of Clue 4, which came out yesterday. I will, it's so hard to show you guys properly because it's all squinched up on my needles and lace just does not look pretty until you block it out. But I'm going to show you nonetheless so you can get an idea of how beautifully it's growing. This is my version. I have made it in Farmer's Daughter Fibers in the Foxy Lady Base in four different colorways. We have olive oil is that first one, Gary Cooper, Mr. Pocket, and then the most gorgeous colorway, Meet Me in Atlantic City. And I am in love with this colorway, you guys. Oh, so much to say about this. First of all, I was hesitant to use all four colors when I pivoted to the 12 birds because um, it uses less than half of each skein and I kind of felt bad dipping in to those because then, you know, it's so hard to use up those skeins because if you make it with a, I mean, if you use it in another shawl, oftentimes, you know, you don't have enough and it just becomes this conundrum. However, I was so excited about using these colors that I finally just decided, you know what? This was my plan, and even though I'm gonna pivot, I'm going to use the colors because I really wanted to see them interplay, and I could not be happier. The way the colors are fading into each other is just absolutely stunning. I was so excited about this final colorway. Let me show it to you in the skein, it's this. I've said this to y'all before, but it looks so different wound up than it did in the skein that I was really excited to see it knitting up. And let me show you just one section. It's hard to kind of see, but I think you can see here how it's knitting up and it is absolutely stunning. I am so happy with variegated yarns. You just never know. Sometimes they look so beautiful in a skein and then when you knit them up, they look messy and chaotic. This is just lovely. It has so many colors, but they play so well together. And the thing I really am so happy about is that, so she tells you to basically do three colors in a fade and then one color as a color pop. And I was a little worried because the pick, the color I picked as the pop was actually quite in the very same color family as my other three. It wasn't really necessarily a pop. It was just the only one that had variation in the skein. And now that it's knit up, I am so happy with it. I love the amount of contrast that there is. I love the fact that this first color and my color pop are very similar. It just is keeping it a very toned down shawl rather than it being, you know, tonal and then one crazy pop. I was kind of more going for toned down muted colors. And the way it's turning out is just simply lovely and beautiful. And I am really happy with it. I have to say, I'm enjoying it more as the shawl progresses. And I think one big reason is finally in clue four, or maybe it was at the end of clue three, going into four, she had us putting um, stitch markers between the repeats. And I have just found that the experience of knitting lace is so much more, it's just literally, there's more ease and joy in it when you have stitch markers. Something as simple as that, because 
it's so easy to stay on track and it's also so easy to know if you've somehow gotten off track. And I don't know quite why she wanted us to not do that in the first one, but I think it's because the repeats were changing. So it wasn't staying so regular. And so she kind of said, if you do put stitch markers in, they might not be reflective of the repeats at some point. So I did not. And now that there are, it just feels so easy and I can go with the flow and just really enjoy it a lot more. Um, I have to say this lace, these lace patterns just could not be simpler. So if you are new to lace, this is not a complicated project um, at all, at least yet. Um, I think a total beginner could have total success with this project. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I have to tell you guys, I think it's because I'm a very, um, like in all my schooling, I've always been very type A and regimented and academic. And I always was someone who's just very organized with my work and wanted to always be at the top of my class and stuff. So I know it's just knitting, but like when Stephen West would have the four clues and they'd be so enormous, I felt so stressed to try to keep up and just, I would put so much pressure on myself and then I'd inevitably fall behind and then I'd feel so discouraged and disappointed. And then with this, it's like the clues have been so incredibly manageable and it's over six weeks. And you know, maybe it's not like that for the 24 birds because it is a much bigger piece. It's a round shawl, so it's just way more knitting. But so far, I've been able to enjoy this so much because I'm able to keep up. And at the same time, because I am just not a monogamous knitter, I'm able to keep doing other things, other pieces I'm working on. It just has been really enjoyable. I have to say, I've really, really unexpectedly loved this MCAL. Um, I mean, I was hoping to love it, but I've really loved the amount of knitting in each week. I've been surprised how big of a difference that made in my journey. Um, and it's kind of made me realize how type A I am. So I, I've i just really loved it. I'm already like halfway through the clue from this week and I just started it yesterday. It's crazy. And I'm, I haven't even been knitting that much this week because the week has been a little bonkers. Um, another thing I will say is I'm actually looking forward to having leftovers of this variegated Meet Me in Atlantic City because I think it would make the prettiest um, summer like sleeveless top. Uh, my favorite, the outline tank. I'm actually thinking with whatever's left over in this and one more, I could make a beautiful outline tank and I think it would be so pretty in this silk merino blend. I think it would be beautiful. It has like such a lovely sheen that, you know, that single ply, I'm just such a sucker for a single ply yarn. It's so pretty. And um, I think in a summer top with no sleeves, like, there's less to worry about pilling. And I think because of the silk, it won't pill as much. So that is my plan. Um, I really, really love these colors. They're so unusual for me. I don't usually, I haven't in the past worked with these colors and it's been an absolute joy. So can't recommend this fiber enough. Really enjoying the pattern. I've been hearing from so many of you that you've been enjoying it. So I'm really happy to hear that. And I'm sure Helen Stewart is happy to hear that since she had to hustle and release the second companion shawl, which I thought was very generous of her. Um, as a designer, I'm sure that was a lot of work, but I think for me, oh, the other thing, someone had asked me why I pivoted to the pie, from the pie shawl to the half pie shawl. Um, and for me, it is because, like I said, I like to have multiple things going at once and investing so much time in one big round shawl just I would rather enjoy a smaller project and keep knitting on other things. Like to me, that's just more joyful. 
Um, and so that's why I pivoted. I think the round is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. If I had known it was gonna be round when I made my yarn choices and I wanted to stay with the round, I would have used you know, a regular sock yarn with um, some nylon and some, you know, four ply basically because it's just going to wear better. And for me, if I had done the round, I would have wanted it more as a throw in my house and a single ply in that I think is going to be a little bit less, you know, able to handle that level of wear or that level of use. So that's why I pivoted. So Anyway, if you are doing it, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am this week. I have really, really enjoyed it. And I am looking forward to staying on track and having this finished in the allotted time. I feel like that would just be magical. Okay, moving right along. I'm going to take a sip of water because my throat feels very dry. Last week, I had told you guys that I had been excited to start the Luca hat by Suzanne Mueller. It is a crocheted hat, um, so cute. And I happen to have the material she used, which is the Ra Ra Raffia by Wool and the Gang. You have it right here in the colorway Desert Palm. I was really hesitant because I love knitting in a way that just crochet just can't hold a candle, but I was really interested in giving something new a try. I've never used this material before. I also love making hats. I think there's just such a fun, smaller project that gives you a different timeline and it really um, gives you as much instant gratification in the in the making world as you can get. Um, so I was willing to give it a try. Also, I'd never made like a fedora kind of hat before. So I was curious how the shaping would work and all that. So all that being said, I did cast it on. And it is so cool looking. Okay, I'm going to show you. It's kind of an oval right now. And because I am at a point where I'm just going round and round, it's wanting to curl because it needs to make that shape. Like the shaping is, that's why it's like this. Um, so it doesn't look like much, but a couple of things. I have to tell you, this is not the easiest thing on your hands. Like right here, I'm just really sore. So I'm having to force myself to really only work on this in small portions. So I've been using this as my out in the world project. So if I'm sitting at a practice or something for just an hour, I'm working on it there because it's easy to keep track of. Um, this is so, it is really not fun to crochet with because you have to use such a small hook comparatively. So I really feel like you're almost fighting for every stitch. There's no flow or rhythm that I can get with it. Um, because the hook is so small, I think I'm using the 2.75 millimeter hook. And as you can see, it's a very big ribbon. What I did find is a couple times I made a mistake and I had to rip back. And when you rip back, it all has kind of squished up. And when it's like that, it's a little bit easier to crochet with. So I've been trying to kind of like use my nail and squish it and making a little bit smaller, but it doesn't work that well. I mean, to be honest, it's just, it is not a super pleasant experience to knit, to crochet with. Um, if you used a bigger hook, you'd have an enormous gauge and it wouldn't have this tight weave that you need for a hat. So that's why it's kind of, it's mandatory that you use a really small hook. So it just makes for a more challenging um, process. But like I said, I'm trying to stick with it and just do a little bit of it at a time and realize that it's not gonna be instant gratification and it's going to be you know, a little bit longer than I'd hoped. But at the same time, it's still going by really fast. Like. I think the next step is ironing it into the right shape and then 
So that'll be the top and then it'll work. I'll work the sides down and then the brim. So it shouldn't be too crazy. Um, I am enjoying it. It's, I don't know why, but I enjoy crocheting in the round so much more than crocheting flat. If you recall, if you've been with me for a while, see, do you see why I'm fussing with this? Is I don't like how this collar wants to kind of stand away from my body. It's not laying flat. And I think that's because of the density of this yarn. So I apologize that I'm fussing with it, but I'm looking at it in the, in the screen and I don't love the way it's poofing up in the back. Anyway, that is an aside. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, if you recall last year, I had tried to crochet a baby blanket and I didn't enjoy the process at all. So I abandoned ship. So I was kind of hesitant to start this, but I really like crocheting in the round. I have absolutely no idea why, but it's pleasant and fun. And um, it's gonna be a project that I hope I can stick to. I've been having wrist issues with my right hand um, from doing push-ups. I have got some jamming in this bone right here that I've been trying to work through with my physical therapist. And this is so much, I can't decide if I think it helps because the rotation during crochet, I feel like might help loosen, but I think it's a fine line. So again, I'm trying not to overdo it with this project, but we will see. If I start to feel like it's hurting my hand more than it's worth, I'm going to scrap it. But I really think if I scrap it that this raffia yarn is never going to get used, and that makes me sad. So I'm going to try to do it in this and just take my time. Also, my friend Jessica, I told you this was a bag she gave me and I love it. This little dumpling bag is so cute and there are so many sewing patterns and a knitting pattern, a free knitting pattern from Pearl Soho for a bag like this that is so cute that I could totally see myself making. So I'll put a link in the show notes because it's been on my mind because I just love it. It's so cute and adorable to have this little bag that has this loop like this and very usable. Okay, what else are we going to talk about? Okay, so I'm so excited about this next project. I was telling you guys last week that I know I needed another project that's more portable, more easily, easy to follow for my out in the world knitting. I just couldn't decide what it is because it's just, oh, I wanted to use yarn I have. Anyway, I couldn't figure it out. I was thinking of doing my ranunculus as I had wanted to do, as you can remember, excuse me. Um, I had gotten that gorgeous red yarn from Ritual Dyes in, I think it's the Maven base in that gorgeous um, jewelweed color. And I pulled it out and I just, I didn't feel that sparkle. And if, if you know me, I like, I need to feel that bubbly effervescent excitement at the beginning of a project, or it turns into this, which is just a slog and just like me just trying to get through it. And I don't like that. Like, I really, really feel like knitting should be a realm that we protect from feeling obligatory. It should just be our space to be joyful in. So I just felt like I was forcing the ranunculus because I think I didn't want to do it right now because I know the warmer months are upon me and I would finish it at a time that I wouldn't be able to wear it because it was a 100% wool. Um, so what I decided to do one night this week when I was in bed, it's like my I'm exhausted and all I can do is like I'm too burned to even knit. So I was scrolling through my very, very, very long queue of favorites in my Ravelry um, because that's just kind of where I dump every pattern that I've ever come across that I might want. So it's a good way to go through and see if something piques my interest from, you know, months or years even past. And I was scrolling and deep in it, I found a pattern. I don't even remember what it's called now. What is it called? Um, oh my gosh. 
I didn't write it down. Let me, ha I'm gonna have to look it up. But while I look it up, I will still talk to you. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. And it was one of those pieces that's long sleeves, but just perfect for Boulder or perfect for Colorado in this time of year because it is such a loose gauge and it just has that flowy kind of bohemian look that I just love. It is called Shizen. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Shizen by Eri Shimitsu. I just loved it so much. I love the way she's wearing it. It's a pure white with denim. It just looks so lovely. I love it. It reminds me of the designer Eileen Fisher, if any of you are familiar. Just like these really easy but classic, elegant pieces. Like I just, it is my favorite kind of top. And so I just instantly knew that's what I wanted to make. However, I did have hesitation because I always get nervous when there's a designer that's new to me and I get nervous when the pattern was not originally written in English because I get scared that from my past experience, whenever I've encountered that, I find the pattern to be really, really challenging. Um, there's two designers. They were, I think one is Finnish and the other, I don't know, but not originally written in English and just really challenging to follow. So I was very hesitant, but I read tons of project reviews on Ravelry and over and over, many of them said that the directions were just so well written and so easy to follow. So then I felt like, okay, I can rest assured that I can probably manage. And I am so glad I took the chance because it is such a lovely pattern. So beautifully written, so straightforward. There's no like odd style. Sometimes I've found some designers almost use like a more narrative style, like rather than just giving it to you straight, it's like written in paragraphs. And I just need you to tell me what each row is, okay? I need instructions, not suggestions. And this was just right up my alley, written beautifully. Now, the other thing I would, would note is that the fiber she uses is very specific. She uses Nomad Noose in Silky Banana, which it sounds amazing. It is 100% banana fiber, which apparently is very eco-friendly and they use the stalks of the banana and it's this beautiful, thick, thin yarn that is just very unique looking. I thought it was so gorgeous, but I don't think there are any vendors in the US, so it was not accessible to me. And also, I have so much yarn, I really wanted to use what's in my stash. What was very shocking to me is it says that that yarn is a DK, and it does not appear DK weight in the sample she shows. Like it just looks like a very open gauge. Um, and so on the Ravelry page, it says any gauge, which reminded me of ranunculus, which, you know, she says you can use anything from fingering weight to worsted, you know, it's just gonna give you a different effect. It seemed like that, but then it had a very specific gauge. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna ignore the fact that she says this yarn is DK because I know I want a very airy, open garment. My mind instantly went to linen quill because it's such a beautiful yarn, number one. It's very, very light fingering weight. It's a blend. And I had an entire sweater's worth in my stash in a color that I really wanted to use. So I gauge swatched. And this never happens to me. I nailed it on my swatch. I had 17 stitches per row and I never, ever, ever hit it. So I was just like, felt like it was meant to be. I'll even show you my little swatch. I swatched it in the leftovers from my daughter's half and half in that pretty robin egg blue. So this is my swatch. It was done in two by two ribbing. And I think I love the way 
it turned out. This is exactly the type of fabric I'm looking for. And if anything that this Callius cardigan show, taught me is that, as Andrea Murray often says, like make sure you like the fabric you're getting, even if it's on gauge, you might not like that fabric. And I really liked this fabric. I wanted it to be very open and airy. And that is what is happening. And I've started it and it is such a fun project. I am doing it in reed gray, which is just the perfect color for this project because it's just off. It's not white. It's not really gray. It's just this perfect, I don't know. I don't want to say dirty, but it's, I'm not going to be able to keep anything that white, white. So I was happy to have a color that was very neutral and light, but not perfectly white. So the other thing that's really cool about this, this is where I am. What I like about it is it's basically several different types of ribbing. So you have two by two plain ribbing and you have one by one twisted ribbing. And if that wasn't cool enough, because what I think is cool about that, I'll show you just on this side, I'll try to hold it up. It gives you just like a slight variation and like an or very organic look without quite knowing why it looks like that. Like if it was all just the same kind of ribbing, it would have a very uniform look, but because it's very varied, it just, it gives it that more natural look that I just really, really like. The other thing that is so cool is that, so basically you cast on with a provisional cast on in the middle of the back, and then you knit a few rows and then you split for the back because the back has a V. And then you come over the shoulders, you do the fronts, and then you rejoin to do the front panel. What I thought was so unique that I have never encountered, maybe you more experienced knitters have encountered, is that she has you split, but you keep knitting simultaneously. So you don't have to do that back panel and then put your stitches on hold and the other back panel and then you put your stitches on hold. You just use two different balls of yarn. So you knit across, drop that strand, pick this strand up and knit across. And I just thought that was so cool and unique. And I am loving that because I really hate putting stitches on a hold and having to like, it's just another step that I would rather knit them simultaneously. The only reason I think it's the only con is that it's a little fussy in that if you're out in the world, you're having to juggle two balls of yarn. Not a huge deal, but I think in the world, it's easier to just have to do one ball of yarn. But I really am enjoying the fact that I can just, it just feels like it's going by faster. Or not even faster, but just like you're able to keep your rhythm and it's just lovely. I'm really enjoying this piece. I would totally hunt down that banana fiber and try to knit it in this because I would be curious to see how it knits up that banana fiber. I'm a sucker for alternative yarns. There's, you know, eucalyptus yarn. And I, the only thing with that is the one that I've seen is very, you know, traditionally spun in uniform. It doesn't have that really, it doesn't look like a plant fiber. And I'm interested in the silky banana because it looks different. Um, if you have used it, please tell me if you like it and where you bought it because I would love some. So that is what I am working on right now and really, really enjoying it. Um, the pattern is very intuitive. It's very easy to um, memorize the right and wrong side rows and you have to do those two rows repeated 16 times for the back. And um, it's just easy to kind of, it's not mindless knitting, but it's not, you know, don't talk to me, I'm working on this knitting. Um, one other thing I was gonna say is, I can't remember. Anyway, really, really loving this. Um, I love having 
quantities of linen quilt in my stash because it's such a good yarn that's so well priced, has such a beautiful color range, and so you can use it for so many projects. Like it works for so many different things. Um, I was thrilled. This the gray has been sitting in my yard, my stash for a couple of years. I don't even know what I bought it for, to tell you the truth. I don't usually just have three skeins of yarn, but I must have bought it for something. Um, and it's working beautifully for this. Oh, what I was going to say is what I really also like about this project, it has really simple, tiny details that are just beautiful and unique. For instance, on the side, there's this almost, it looks less like a cable and more like a braid. It's a slip stitch cable. I don't know that you can even see it, but it's right here, the second column where my finger is. It's only if you were really looking at it and if I pointed it out, but I like hidden details like that. I think it just elevates a simple garment. And I think the front and the back are joined with some sort of very thin braid also. So it just, it's one of those projects that has some lovely simple details. I like that it's a V-neck, but it's not like a very wide V-neck. It's a very shallow v-neck and she also gives you the option for an even shallower one that comes kind of closer to the neck if you prefer that so some options um in this pattern i was thrilled to discover this designer like i said had never made anything from her but she has so many gorgeous patterns of quite a bit of variety so um i look forward to you know digging a bit deeper and having some of her patterns as options in the future. I think I just get in ruts with designers and then I end up feeling uninspired. This is why I think it's important to just very generously add to your queue when you are inspired because you never know when that pattern will fit what you're looking for in your life. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Okay. Gosh, I don't know why I'm tired. It's like, I feel like I've been talking for hours. Oh, I guess it has been 42 minutes. That is a long time. Um, it's just been a long week, you guys. It's been a long and unusual week, and um, I would like some peaceful knitting time. I am very excited because I'm going to go to my friend Sharon's house after this to try out her spinning wheel. I am so, so excited about that. I literally just want to sit down and try to treadle on her wheel. I just wanna see what it feels like because as I told you guys last week, I'm trying to find a wheel that I wanna buy and she has the Ashford Kiwi 3, which is super well-priced. I think it's less than $600. I know it doesn't come with all the accessories you need, which is fine, like I'm willing to spend more. Um, but I just think that's a good beginner wheel price. And from what I've heard from like everybody, everybody thinks that they're going to buy one wheel and then that's it forever, but they end up falling in love and then getting a different wheel. So I'd, or an additional wheel that is, um, I would love to get a more, like a reasonably priced wheel and then as I get better and understand what I'm looking for, then, you know, maybe many years down the line, get a different wheel um, that's more expensive. It's just a lot of pressure if you're going to spend over a thousand dollars and you don't even know what you're looking for. That's just, it's really hard. So I'm really hopeful that I like her Kiwi 3. Uh, several of you sent me your thoughts and suggestions and I cannot tell you how helpful and appreciative I am because one of you said you didn't love the ladybug, the shacked ladybug, and that's the one I was thinking I was going to get and that's a thousand dollars. So the fact that someone didn't love it just gave me pause on that and gave me, and then many of you said you liked the Kiwi 3. So I am really hopeful. I am hopeful that it just feels good it, for my body, that like my body feels aligned with it. Cause in that I've watched a couple of videos about picking a spinning wheel and it does talk about just making sure 
the way the pedals are set up is feels natural for your body, you know, because you're going to be sitting in that position for a while. So I am so excited to go do that. So that is what is on my afternoon agenda. And I really would like to finish Clue 4 because I just, I really want to stay on track. So I'm hoping that maybe this weekend I can finish Clue 4. Um, what else is going on? It's just been so hectic. Basketball is back. We had a couple weeks off and I just got so used to having more free time. Like, you know, having, being able to make plans on the weekends was just such a luxury. And then we're just back into basketball with a vengeance. He has a game. His he won't his games won't be over till ten o'clock tonight, and that's in Denver. So it's like by the time he gets home, it'll probably be eleven, and it's just it's exhausting, you guys. And then more games tomorrow, and then my daughter's practices. It's just I'm tired. It's like I need Monday to recover from my weekend with these kiddos, but such is life. I can't complain. I love it, but it, it really is, it's such a family commitment and you just give so much up to that world. So anyway, I'm gonna stop complaining about that. Let's see, what am I reading? I'm reading The Husbands by Holly Gramazio, I think is her name. Honestly, it was just kind of a desperate book because I couldn't find anything to read. And I wanted something lighter and kind of fun and this fit the bill. I am enjoying it. Is it gonna change my life? Absolutely not, but I am enjoying it. I like the narrator. Um, it's a unique premise. It's sort of silly, but you know, it's fine. Um, I'm hoping I've got some, I got some great recs from you guys. So I put those in my Libby hold list. So I'm hoping to get another more, you know, like a book that's more up my alley in my Libby like queue, just waiting for one of those to come through. So I wish I had better book recommendations. We are watching a really fun show right now. It's called Girls on the Bus. It's on HBO Max. It is actually quite good and entertaining. The first episode I was like, okay, like fine. But as it's progressed, I'm actually enjoying it a lot. Um, and I think... When we finish that, I really want to watch Ripley. Um, I don't know. I think it might be on Netflix. But it's more of like a mystery suspense, more intense. So I'll be excited to pivot to that afterwards. So those are the things that are on my screen and um, in my ears right now. And I'm going to be honest with you, my stomach is growling something fierce. I am so hungry right now that I am going to go eat something. Um, I didn't get to eat. I'm trying to squeeze in my taping before my husband gets home. So I just thought I'd sit down real quick and tape. So I hope you guys enjoyed catching up today. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I am going to have a bonus episode for you. So keep your eyes open. I have a fun um, new thing I wanted to share with you guys, but it's not here yet. So I'm going to give you a little teaser. Keep your eyes open. I think it's supposed to come in the mail today. So depending on when I get some time to tape another episode, I'm going to do a mini exciting episode with you guys soon over the next couple of days, hopefully latest by Monday. So do check back. I normally only post on Friday, but I really do want to just have this separate um, little unboxing video for you guys. So keep your eyes open for that. So I will see you here sooner than later. Have a fantastic weekend. I will see you then. Bye.